Happy New Year's. And it's the first inaugural Buck 110 day. And one more thing. If you don't chew Copenhagen snuff, then fuck you. All right, let's get on with it. This here is a, a video regarding the Buck 110. It's simply a knife, nothing special. It never intended to impress anybody itself. It's just a knife. Yet, apparently, there's so much weight that's been put on it over the years. And now, people like to shoot videos regarding it and make fun of it or poke fun at it. Which I, <laughs> it, I just find humorous because it's just a knife. Like, there's people who use this knife before there was YouTube, <laughs> you know? So if something predates YouTube, should you really do a video regarding about it? And if uh, if you're intelligent enough to notice that, should you do a, shoot a video, a rebuttal to those people doing that? Probably not. So I'm just as much of a dipshit as everybody else. <laughs> However, here we are. Let's just start with this one right here. Yeah, give me a moment here. It is a two-hand opener. And I only have one hand available. So this is a 1997, I think, vintage. Uh, yeah, so you can see the little stamp on there. Maybe. Oh, we got that fucker. Upside down U. Kind of a deal? Yeah. I think if you look that up, I think it's 97. I think I actually got this knife in 98. It might have been 97. I can't remember. But since then, so what was that, 21 years ago? Going on 22 years ago? Um, that's That's got 21 or 22 or whatever years, fire seasons on it. And hunting seasons, actually. And fishing seasons. Um, it's, uh, done a lot of work. It's cleaned a lot of animals, be it feathered or be it furry or even scaly or finny. And guess what? Yeah, the blade is oxidized, but kind of in a, kind of a cool patina way. I don't know if the flash is really helping with it. But it actually has kind of a, when you compare it to uh, a new one, this is new. It doesn't really look new because it's already got one fire season on it. So for my previous um, estimate, this guy actually subtract 2018 because this one was used all season. Um, I don't know if you can tell the difference. Big time patina. Brand new. So you can see there's, I don't know, you, there's rust streaks on there, or the oxidation or pitting or whatever. Uh, this is, I think that pretty much, the knife has been used, abused, neglected, mistreated, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it has good fit and finish, right? I think, you know, um, it's got perfect, perfect lockup. There is no play in this blade vertically or horizontally. Uh, the only issue really, honestly, is when it's shut like this, I don't know if you can hear that, but it is, there is play in it when it is shut. But as soon as you open it up, that goes away. So now I can't prove it, but no, no, uh, no blade play, which is a big deal to me. I could care less pretty much about finish. The fit part of knives is, for whatever reason, is really important to me, like uh, mm, centering. So this one actually is well centered. 
this one, this new one is uh, perfectly centered. I can show you that real quick, like. That's focusing. A lot of glare, apologies. Okay. So what is a buck 110? Well, it's a folding hunting knife originally designed in the 60s, 64, I think, which I think means that uh, it was a 50th anniversary here a few years back. Um, personally, my dad, when I grew up, probably before I was born, you now obviously it's before I was born, but he has, he has one. He still has the, the one that he always had. Um, so it was kind of like the go-to knife. That's what him and all of his buddies had. And when I thought of a knife, that's what I thought of because do you really, yeah, you need a pocket knife, maybe like a Swiss army knife, maybe some other kind of lightweight lock back or, you know, locking blade or I don't think I ever saw him with one of those, um, slip joints, but I think what well, he had something, so he must have had some other knife, uh, for like, you know, using a more typical things. As far as hunting goes, always had this. So that's what I grew up looking at, thinking, yeah, that's, that's what a knife is. So I got out of high school, got a, my first fire job, and he actually gave me this. And it's a little unique because uh, it's, it's actually a chisel ground. Now I've kind of fucked it up, dicked it up over the years. Um, originally I tried to probably turn it, I thought this whole chisel thing was a stupid idea back before I knew any better and it, it I might have been right I don't know but I tried to make it into a V it never really worked it just really thinned out the apex I think and made it really prone to chipping but since then I've just sharpened on this side and deburred on that side though it still looks like there's kind of a bevel over there but and there is but I'm trying to get rid of it now um but all sorts of different nobody really showed me how to sharpen a knife like I had a mentally hard time because my dad, I don't know, he never, I, <laughs> he never really showed me, or maybe I would just never paid attention to what he did teach me. But I used all sorts of different methods over the years, and, and really until recently, and now I, I use a, a sharp maker, and I really pay attention to it because I think what I did, I had some, I've used flat stones, I've used diamond or steels, you know, like the, you know, I don't know, car out of some shit you buy from a sporting goods store. I was trying to figure out how the heck you're supposed to do this. But finally, I just took my time, thought about it. And I did a pretty good job, I think. And then, I mean, you can see how coarse it is now. It's because I'm trying to get rid of some chips. And I'm just using a medium rod on a Spyderco. But eh, anyway, um, sharp maker, sharp maker. But uh, that's kind of why it looks so damn coarse. And it is coarse. However, it is sharp. I mean, you can shave your arm with it if you like. Um, so, yeah. So, I got a better handle on that now. So, what is the Buck 110? The Buck 110 is a folding uh, hunting knife. Specifically, a hunting knife. That doesn't mean that this is that's the one thing you can use this knife for. Um, however, that's what it was intended for originally. And viola it's very easy to clean out i mean you can just rinse that thing out with water let her dry don't let her dry put her back in the sheath wet whatever it doesn't really matter i never put any oil on this thing i have oiled the pivot recently uh, but uh i always just cleaned it out shit it had ash dirt blood dust whatever mold mildew all sorts of shit probably in this thing just because I left it, it my storage unit flooded once and I, it was in a cardboard box because that was the first and last time that that thing actually flooded and it was the last time I had my stuff in any cardboard boxes in there <laughs> in there but just because of my job firefighting job I, I do keep a storage unit to keep all my shit uh and that's this that's this is where this it always goes after hunting season and after fire season and whatnot um but it did flood. And so things stayed wet, froze, thawed, froze, thawed all winter long. And um, that might have been where most of that patina came from. Or, you know, oxidation. Or There you go. Now you kind of see what's going on there. But actually in the real natural light, it looks pretty cool. It's almost like a black. 
and you don't see those marks quite as much. Uh, so, hey, I ain't sweating it. But it is a stainless steel, and I, I mean, it is late 90s. I do believe it was still 420HC steel that they used even then. Um, so that's kind of a testament to its durability. So, seen many years of fire. In fact, fire, you could say, Washington State to Florida, to the Florida Keys, actually. Uh, you could say San Diego area, California, Cleveland National Forest to Virginia. Like, uh, what is that, Shenandoah National Park? I was just trying to think of all the fires I've been through on the furthest reaches um, of uh, the corners and whatnot. And you can say, I can't remember where I was at, Texas, El Paso, Texas or something, uh, and then up to Minnesota. So pretty much center of the country, north and south, all four corners. Well, Virginia, I know it's not northeast, but I don't think they get a whole lot of fires up in the New England states. So like Virginia or Maryland or whatever is the furthest I've been up there on fires. Mm. Been to Alaska hunting and fishing quite a bit, but never on a fire, luckily, because the bugs are bad enough. I'd rather not be sitting around in it unnecessarily. <clears throat> but anyway, what is the point of this? Well, the point is, is that if this thing was originally intended for a hunter, for hunting, <clears throat> that's what that's who bought these knives. That's what these knives were marketed to. That's what they were built for. It was for hunting, right? They're all easy to clean out. It's got a proper blade length, pretty much a proper blade shape, though there are other shapes like a drop point might work pretty well, you know, like a skin or a skinny blade shape, but you can always get away with, you know, kind of guiding it, guiding it, everything in there. So you're not really messing anything up when you're gutting an animal or skinning it. Um, holds a pretty decent edge, really. It's stainless. You know, so that's a major upgrade from the old carbon steels, which I do like carbon steels, but I mean, you know, this is just a low maintenance as possible as you can really get because I've, you know, I've used this thing, I've hammered with it. And like I said, you know, in my earlier younger days, this thing did get abused. I mean, that's where these chips really came from. And that's why it looks so worn is because I've always tried to chase those chips out of that blade by sharpening it. And I've taken a lot of life out of it, but you know, it is what it is. I know you can always send it back in, no way. No way, I'll always retain this blade till the day I retire. Stop hunting. This one though, I did pick up this summer because I left this one behind. I can't remember if I forgot it or I was just gonna kind of retire it because I didn't want to lose it or break it or something. I was like, after this long, I'll just keep it for hunting. But yeah, you know, I immediately missed it. So I picked this thing up along the way this summer, probably about June. And uh, I'm very happy with it too. You know, fit and finish it on it. It's pretty flawless. Uh, the brass actually didn't come shiny, polished. It came kind of um, tarnished, kind of like that. The shiny spots you see, I, I guess, are just from the sheath. But, like, honestly, if you're going to put these two side to side, I don't know really which one you think is the newer one. I mean, this one, actually, I kind of like that coloring or finish on it better. And like I said, I've never done any maintenance to that wood, and it's been abused you know, um, or neglected at least. I mean, I've always respected it, but you know, it got used, it's been used. Um, so it's kind of a testament to the build quality. And I mean, this thing I paid like 40 some dollars for, um, from a store, not even online. So it was like, I think it was under 50 bucks somewhere in the forties, you know, I mean, that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty good deal. You know, it's pretty decent steel. I like it. It gets the job done. Sharp as shit. I mean, it's sharper. This thing is just as sharp or not sharper than your typical Benchmade or Spyderco you get get from the factory, factory edge. I think it's I think it's sharper. Like I think cold steels they come pretty sharp. That's my experience. Some Benchmades do, some Spydercos do. But um, yeah. So very impressive there. So I know that people are always got an issue with the fit and finish on bucks, but. 
not my experience with uh, with these. I did buy a buck, uh, one of their newer folding models a couple years ago. Um, I can't remember which one it was. It's like their popular one. Uh, and, and it was a, it, it lacked all, all fit and finish qualities that you would want pretty much. So I gave it away and the guy I gave it to was super stoked on it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's and it, you know it would definitely do the job. It just had had some issues that I was kind of uh, against. Also, here a couple of years ago, I picked up this. It is a four dot buck one ten. Um, just awesome. More similar to the one my dad has, uh, but it uh, it's from the early eighties, I guess. It's a four dot, not the not the two dot. As you can see, and it, it was new. I know it, it looks tarnished, but that's just the way it came because, you know, it came in the box. The guy said I never used it, and he didn't. You can tell. Um, but, you know, and he said I, I, he's, he's, he didn't polish it up or anything. I said, great. I, ha I still haven't done it myself. Then I might not. I'll just leave it in its natural condition. Um, and the sheath, because I have used this or carried this knife. I haven't used it a whole lot, but I have carried it. Uh, and you can, the big, you know, it's another big difference is, I think the quality is actually better on this than these, honestly, because, you know, some, usually I think newer is better, but, um, sometimes, you know, the older is better. Like these have the rounded handles, probably, probably more comfortable really, but this is a hunting knife. It's not meant for like, you know, I'm not a butcher. I don't do it for, I don't do it eight hours a day. So, you know, this thing is, is fine for, uh, for using on an animal, obviously a bird or a or fish you know i mean you're really not even holding the handle a whole lot as it is and it's very quick and even the large large animals you're not getting after it all day long either um and then the sheaths so this is the newer one or the newest one it's uh kind of got that um belt strap that i actually like because with this, the way this one rides, I think this one would be the perfect out of all of them because it would kind of hang below your the waistband on your pack. You know, I carry a 35, 40 pound pack daily fire, fire line pack, um, or even like, you know, 100, 100 plus pound pack, pack out bag. Um, and I, I'm not gonna take this to work, but I think it that's better because it, it sits in your belt. It's gonna sit below your, your waist, your waist strap on your backpack. Whereas this thing that I carried all those years, I mean, the only damage done to it really is this, and it still is going to hold that. This thing is not going to give, but uh, that's from sometimes this, you know, the, the pack is sitting there pressing on your hip bone through the knife, right? And it's uncomfortable, so I would pull it aside and then just rest the waist strap, pack strap, like that. So all that weight pretty much just sitting on that and, all those years of that and that's that's all the damage that thing took so you know they do make a good sheath as well um not as good quality leather as this old one and then this one actually had a sticker on it that said made in mexico um but it honestly doesn't look a whole lot different or smell a whole lot different than this one i think it is just a tad lower grade than this though i, th I think i can detect a little difference I think it's a little thinner, um, but not not a whole lot. So I think they've actually been making this cheaper leather sheath for for quite a while. But I think it's actually still just a little bit better than that one. But and not because it's made in Mexico. It's just like you know, that's just what leather they they prescribed. You know, that's what they that's what they they're they're saving money that way. Because I'm assuming back in the day, back even in the late '90s when this was bought it probably costed more even then than this does you know let's say it's a 40 dollar online knife now with a leather sheath you know this one 20 years ago or whatever could have been 60 bucks or more i don't know i i think that <laughs> it's a this whole setup is a is a bargain though i do and i know it doesn't reach the you know it's not a knife that people like you know if you're on like the youtube people they like like a Kershaw, Chinese Kershaw, you know, or something like this. 
which I like this knife too. Okay. As far as like put in your pocket, lightweight, one handed opening, you know, it's good. It's a good all around knife. That's a $75, $80 knife right there. Uh, made out of plastic and VG 10 steel. It's not, I don't think it's any better than 420 HC as done by Buck. Um, I mean, this wooden brass, it's heavy. These things do have some weight, but you know what? You carry them on in, on your belt. That's what they're for. That's what they're originally designed for. Keep it out of your pocket. Keep your, you know, your legs clear. You don't want a big ass hunting knife in your pocket while you're hiking around anyway. Like I carry this for work too. Um, I usually keep it, keep it in a cargo pocket tucked in the corner so I can't even tell it's there. Not this particular, well, this one, yes, for a few years. And then uh, I had one, an older one that I finally lost. Um, so I'll carry that. Carry one, a Benchmade AFO auto knife and then one of these two. Well, this one now, this one's strictly hunting. Um, so yeah. For the modern person that works in retail in downtown Portland, Oregon or whatever, or that lives um, overseas in some some foreign country where their laws say that you can't have a knife like that, um, that's that's too bad. You know, they, they treat you like you're in kindergarten in those countries, I guess. And then that's why you act like you're in kindergarten. You know, that's that's kind of a bummer for you, I guess, because you probably don't even know any better. But here in the good old U.S., at least where I'm from, parts of the country, it's at least an option. Now, I'm sure there's better hunting knives, but this one ticks all the boxes. I mean, I bow hunt too. Like, what do you think I shoot? I shoot a longbow, you know, <laughs> traditional. My boots are modern, Gore-Tex, et cetera, Vibram soles, sweet, but I do prefer to shoot, shoot a, uh, a longbow as opposed to a compound. So this is always going to have it's it's always going to have its place. Some people like old school, like they just want a fixed blade. Some of them like slip joints. This is kind of like well, it's a locking knife, fully functional. Yeah, it's kind of got the old school appeal to it. That's for people like me in that way. In other ways, I mean, I'm all about that. Which there's obviously even more high tech than that, and I'm just not even into that. Now you have titanium flipping knives and all that ball bearings. I mean that's. That's a whole other corner, whole other realm, scope of it. That's for the people that like that stuff. Um, this is a hunting knife. As far as modern goes, like modern comparisons, I think this is a good option. The old uh, Spyderco Military. I think, uh, yeah, I haven't used this thing for hunting. It actually, unless you, you can take it apart, that's a benefit. But there's more nooks and crannies and whatnot in there that stuff can get into. It's kind of nasty if you're actually cutting into game, but it's probably pretty decently easy to clean out. Um, this, like as far as non-auto knives goes, is I mean, I think it's an awesome knife. I think it, you know, you can see in there, it's, it's going to be a kind of a pain to clean out too, but... That blade shape is, I really like it. I mean, if, you know, this, to me, this is what would replace that for sure. Um, in fact, just as an analogy, what I kind of like in a knife is that four, four inch ish blade, three quarters, the four inch blade, you know, it's like, it's not small, but it's not overly big. You know, it's kind of like, uh, that's, these are Blizzard, Blizzard, however you want to say it, Kochi skis with marker Duke bindings on it. Um, that is a burly setup. Okay, you can ski it on ice. You can ski it. Probably people watching this are not into skiing, but it's a it's a big burly ski. However, it will ski hard snow. Great, but it's still it's not a uh, close course ski big mountain competition ski but it's not a it's not a gate ski so is this like you can have that or you can have a smaller um little pocket 
knife, you know, I mean that, so this, this will do what a little pocket knife does, but it's also big enough to do other things. And that's kind of what I like. It seems like most people like a smaller knife because they don't need a bigger knife. And that's, that's great. That's fine. doesn't mean that you have to disparage old trusty here. Uh, another, another great option here is this. Same thing, probably a little tougher to clean out. It's good quality though, D2 steel, probably a little bit more prone to to rust, I think, but it's not bad. I mean, I've had it for several years now, and yeah, I got a little, there's a couple, you probably can't see them, there's a couple little spots on there, but it doesn't affect anything. Um, yeah. So I think I pretty much said my review on, uh, or discussion on the old buck 110 figured I got a good day of skiing in not necessarily hung over from last night way to start the new year why not start out with uh, a little buck 110 video hope you all have a good rest of your day